Hi, here. everybody. Welcome to the Hair Loss Show. Good to have you back, Vikram. Good, good to be with you, Russell. All right. Today, we're going to talk about one of the newer medicines yep. that is being used, um, particularly in women with uh, patent hair loss, yep. which, is, uh, which is mostly to do, I think, with a the interaction between the small amount of male hormones that women have and the receptor. And there appears to be a great degree of variability in the receptors. So we see in some of our women, it's very strongly inherited through the female side of the family. Yeah. In other families, we see it's not really inherited so much through the female side, but it is inherited through the male side. So it's a bit more difficult to get your finger on exactly why it's happening. But typically, the thing that we're trying to work on is how do we minimise the effect of even normal levels of hormone on yes. hair loss? Because um, hair loss for women um, of devastating. any age is devastating. Yeah. Uh, it's particularly devastating for young men, but it's really devastating for a woman of any it's age. It's just not socially acceptable no. for, for women. Men can get away with it from, from that perspective. So traditionally, we've used something that was kind of like a diuretic, but it also had this ability to to block the, the receptor, the male hormone receptor in the follicle, which is called spironolactone. Yep. That's been used for at least 30 years uh, to do this. The problem with using it, which we'll discuss in another video, is that you know it can affect potassium levels. Yeah. You know, Women don't particularly like to take a diuretic at night, which gets them up to pee yeah. in the middle of the night. There's a few things uh, to do with it. Uh, and, it's, it and, and even though it's better than nothing, it's not a very targeted or specific um, receptor blocker, but this is, this is a new one called bicalutamide. So it's been around for a, a few years now, and one of the things that they're trying to develop with these newer uh, androgen receptors is to find something that is so target specific on the androgen receptor, it's only going to affect hair. Yes. So at the moment, we'd use this in women, but not so much in men, because we know that the same receptor binds testosterone that binds DHT, dihydrotestosterone. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing about it is that the receptor likes 100 DHTs for every one T, which has been the bane of our life, you know, to treat uh, you know, guys because uh, the receptor loves the bad, the bad yes. one, the DHT. So the search goes on, with experimenting with these newer uh, medicines to try and find a receptor blocker that is so target specific that it doesn't have a feminizing effect and is potentially useful in men. Mm. So um, this isn't quite there yet. I mean, there's something I'm not using in men. I'm only using it in women. But it certainly has a better effect on blocking the receptor. So I think it's more successful. I think this is important because particularly for women that are perimenopausal or menopausal, as their estrogen level diminishes, the very small amount of male hormone they have in, this, in the system exerts a greater impact upon the hairs, and that's why so many of them start to thin. So anything that improves the ability of to stop the hormone binding to the receptor, which it has to do to be active, uh, uh, and doesn't have any other negative impact, um, then that's going to be a, um, a good outcome. So just to, just to clarify what we're talking about with uh, bicalutamide, it is a androgen receptor. So the, we have a androgen receptor, and this is going to block that receptor. And uh, so it doesn't really matter what the hormone level exactly is. Exactly, the receptor is being blocked. And, yeah. and and women uh, in their uh, menopausal years don't have elevated male hormones, but they lose the protective effect of the female so hormones. A relative amount they have uh, the ratio. slightly higher. Yeah. So. It is it is available. It it comes in a, a pill form yes. as well. It's an off label use at this point yes. uh, for women specifically in that postmenopausal group. There are people um, using it for acne, of course. Yes, using it for acne. But I was going to say people are also using a um, mesotherapy version yes. of uh, which is means device. means directly injected yeah. into the scalp again to bypass having to go through the whole yes. system. Yes, it is. I've not used it personally myself, but apparently it's very painful. Uh, well, I think any form of mesotherapy is painful. <laughs> yes, it's a bit like I think this one's PRP. Yeah. I mean, we really got to suffer, yeah, got to suffer yeah. through it. Yeah, so you, you would, I mean, obviously you'd want to do it by uh, ring blockers as, yes. as well. Do the understanding. Um, but uh, I think there's the, the two options that are there, which is the, the oral version and, of course, the, so I think, the mesotherapy. I, I think, I think the, the take home message is that we're working on better and better medicines. I mean, it, <laughs> It's going to come back to the big discussion about um, using rejuvenation therapies versus using you know, medical therapies. Yeah. 
but the rejuvenation therapies that, that, that everybody, regeneration, rejuvenation therapies that people are talking about, are straight stimulant therapies, right? There's no attempt to block the critical chain of androgens binding to the receptor yeah. in any regenerative therapy. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. So this is, you know, like, it's, I guess this is more traditional in the sense that we have been using medications for 30 years now. Uh, starting with minoxidil, um, uh, using medication to try and alter the course yeah. of the condition by, by doing stimulation. And then the, then the regenerative therapies like PRP and, and uh, microneedling have come along and now we have things called exosomes and we have all of these things, new things being developed. But they're still all stimulation therapies. Yes. And um, the, the, the question, and, and I think we'll cover this in more detail in another, uh, in another episode, I think the issue is anything you do that's just stimulation, don't expect it to be 100% effective forever. And you do have to remember that any of these regenerative therapies are going to need to be done on a repeat basis, repeat basis, repeat basis. Well, it doesn't also, get you out, doesn't get you but out. Even with, the same is true with this as well. It will sure. only work as if long you as you're it. taking the medication. But it's, what I'm saying is it's not the alternative to having to do lifelong no. medication yes. yeah. because it's lifelong treatment. Yes. Right? There's no permanent effect to it. And this no. is the thing that patients ask all the time. Well, I just want to be done with it. Well, I'm afraid it it's doesn't work It's not like a course like of that. antibiotics where you take no, it for seven days and you're done with it. Like it doesn't work like that. It doesn't matter whether you use regeneration or you use medication. It's ongoing. Good. Well, look, we'll uh, see how, uh, how effective as, as time goes on and it's getting uh, more, uh, more use. And, uh, well, it came on as an acne drug, but then people realized the benefit in using hair loss. Yeah. And it's been, you know, like uh, proved uh, for acne for the last four years. So I mean, it's, it's, don't get me wrong, it's not the panacea. It comes no. with a long list of side effects as well, well that you've got to be, uh, like everything else does. So you've got to be mindful of that. But certainly, again, if you're a uh, female postmenopausal, uh, make sure you speak to your doctor if, and see if this is appropriate as well. That's right. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks very much for watching. Hope you found that useful and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, everyone.